Do growth factors actually do anything for your skin or are they just hype? Today, I'm breaking down what growth factors are, how they work, and whether or not they're worth your money. I'm Dr. Sam Ellis and I'm a board certified dermatologist in Northern California and I'm here to help you understand your skin and find products that actually work for you. So if you like that type of content, make sure you're subscribed to the channel and don't forget to give this video a thumbs up. So first of all, what are growth factors? They are naturally occurring proteins that your body produces to help signal your skin cells to repair, heal, and grow. They stimulate the fibroblast cells in your skin to make more collagen, more elastin, and to help your skin regenerate and renew. Now, unfortunately, as we we age, we do not create as many natural growth factors. And that's where the idea of using topical growth factors comes in. Can we help support or complement your natural growth factors to help your skin do its thing just a little bit better? When it comes to skincare, it might surprise you, but some growth factors actually are derived from human tissue, but there are other categories of growth factors that are bioengineered to mimic human growth factors, and then there are ones that are plant-derived. Now, this video is not about exosomes, but there's been a lot of chatter about them lately, and just so you know, exosomes are a delivery system, and one of the things that they help deliver into the skin are growth factors. So if you're already using exosomes in your routine, you certainly don't also need growth factors. The use of growth factors in skincare has been around for more than a couple of decades. So this is not just like new technology and the theory and the hope is when you incorporate topical growth factors, it's going to help with things like fine lines and wrinkles, tissue suppleness, elasticity, collagen production, and even things like hyperpigmentation. They're also really popular for use post-procedure, like after microneedling or after lasering when you have these open channels within your skin, because one, that can help growth factors penetrate better, but two, that's when your skin needs to be doing its most optimal healing, and so having support from external growth factors can be helpful. So that's all great in theory, but do growth factors actually work? And what I would say, and what the data would say, is that yes, they do give results, but those results are subtle. There are studies showing measurable improvements in things like skin elasticity and tone with consistent use of topical growth factors, but that's not growth factors across the board. Those are specific brands of growth factors that have invested in that clinical testing. And there are even studies where they did skin biopsies, so took real samples of skin that showed that there was more collagen and increased thickness of the dermis, so increased thickness of the skin with use of topical growth factors. So it's not just hype. And really where you're gonna get the best results is when you're using growth factors in conjunction with other skin actives like vitamin C or other antioxidants, retinoids, peptides, because in your skin, growth factors don't exist within a vacuum. They are there within the context of other signaling peptides of antioxidants, and it's that entire environment that stimulates better skin. And of course, like anything in skincare, you need to use them consistently to see results. So they do give results, the results are modest, do you actually need them in your skincare routine? And what I would say as a board certified dermatologist who does a lot of cosmetics is you certainly do not need them, but they can be a nice to have. I would say 90% of my patients are not using topical growth factors. And then there's that 10% that are sort of my A plus skincare students who also maybe have a very large budget for their skincare, and we'll talk about that in a second, and they're doing the most, and growth factors are part of that. When I'm thinking about whether or not growth factors are worth it and whether or not I would recommend them, one of the biggest things I think about is bang for your buck. And it's a lot of buck for not a huge bang. Most bottles of the most tested growth factors are going to run you about $300. And if you're someone who's on a budget and you're trying to decide which skincare actives to invest in, I put growth factors pretty low on the list. Also, if you're trying to decide, am I going to invest in in-office procedures versus growth factors, you have to keep in mind that a couple of bottles of growth factors, which will last you maybe three to four months, cost the same as a microneedling session in most offices. And I would always say, pick the microneedling over the growth factors. Now, some people don't have to choose between them and they get to do both. And that's amazing, but if you don't get to do both, pick the in-office treatment. Now, the other place I think growth factors can be helpful are if you're at a time in your life where you can't be using retinoids. So if you're trying to get pregnant, if you are pregnant, if you're breastfeeding, from my standpoint as a dermatologist, I would feel comfortable using topical growth factors during that time. And I know that might sound silly to be thinking about anti-aging when you're going through pregnancy, but I have a lot of patients who are pregnant like most of their 30s because they have multiple children and they're not going to cut out all their anti-aging skincare during that time. So it's nice to give options and growth factors to me are an option. 
I also think growth factors can be nice to have if you have really sensitive skin because they don't tend to be irritating for the skin. So I have some patients who can't use topical retinoids. They can't use exfoliating acids, but they can tolerate growth factors and that gives them something that's stimulating their skin in a positive way. Now, if you've decided to invest in growth factors, you have space in your skincare budget, you wanna be nudging your skin better and better and better, there are pretty much only two serums I would recommend and I would really go big or go home here. Every other growth factor to me is sort of not worth it because the two I'm about to tell you about are the most studied. Those are the ones that have actually shown clinical improvements in human subjects. And those are the Skin Medica TNS Advanced Serum and the Neocutis Bio Serum Firm. Both of these will run you about $300. Both of them have shown to lead to skin improvements, including thickness of skin, better tone in skin, more evenness in skin, and both contain human-derived growth factors, which is sort of the creme de la creme. Any other growth factors I'm sort of less excited about investing in because we just don't have those same clinical studies. So for example, I get a lot of questions on this channel about the Allies of Skin Growth Factor Serum, and I'm very intrigued by it. I know a ton of people who use it and love it. They don't have the same clinical studies and it's a little cheaper. I think it's around like $180, but it's still such a big investment that I think for me, instead of investing in that, I would rather put that money towards an extra treatment in a dermatology office once a year. And then the other thing I get asked about are the plant-derived growth factors, for example, from The Ordinary or In Beauty. These are growth factors that are gonna cost you under $100. And for me, the data just isn't there yet because they're plant-derived. We don't expect those growth factors to work on human skin the way human-derived growth factors would. So I'm sure they could lead to certain benefits in your skin. They might make it feel more supple or smoother, but I feel like you can get that from other skincare as well. And so that's not a place I would personally invest. Over the years, I've kind of gone back and forth on growth factors. I've had them in and out of my routine. And ultimately what I would say is they are a pretty big investment for a fairly subtle improvement. And it would not be the thing I would reach for in my routine unless I was already using vitamin C, I was using peptides, I had my retinoid game on point, I was exfoliating. And then if I still felt like I wanted a little something extra, that's where growth factors come in. But I still think you can have an amazing skincare routine and take great care of your skin without growth factors. And if you are going to incorporate growth factors, I would use the ones that are tried and tested. Invest if you're going to invest. I'm curious, what are your thoughts on growth factors? Would you or have you tried them? I have patients who absolutely swear by them, so let us know in the comments. As always, thank you so much for being here. Make sure you give the video a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel, and I'll catch you next time.